Harry is having a really bad few days. The good news? It makes for a really fun read for this old man. Harry is a wizard. Not that Harry the wizard. This Harry is a grumpy man living in modern day Chicago. Not only is he a wizard, he's a wizard for hire. And as you can imagine, there's not a whole lot of interest in his services. And as such, money is tight and he's late on rent. But as luck would have it, Harry receives calls for two job offers on the same day. The first is a woman looking for Harry to locate her husband who has gone MIA. The second is a call from the Chicago PD who's asking Harry to come and consult on a gruesome double murder. So this may seem like Harry's lucky day, but the cases would get complicated really quickly and characters would come out of the woodwork to disrupt Harry's investigation. They would threaten his livelihood, his safety, and even his life. And so starts Stormfront, the first book in the Dresden Files series by Jim Butcher. Now this series is really long and it's got much love from the reading community. I have to admit, I've never read a Dresden Files book, and so it's time I did. First, let's talk about the reasons to love this book. Harry Dresden is a grumpy man, but he makes a great protagonist. He may not be the most ethical wizard that there's ever been, but he typically only bends the rules when it serves to benefit others, not necessarily himself. But Harry isn't the only enjoyable character in this book. This book is chock full of unique and fun characters. We have a mob boss who is trying to dissuade Harry from investigating one of the crimes. We have Bob, who is Harry's spirit friend, who lives in a skull in the basement of Harry's house. And we have Donald, who is like this oafish barbarian type guy who is actually Harry's warden and reports to the White Council anytime that Harry performs something that maybe he shouldn't. And that's just a sampling. Now, while this book is relatively short, it is absolutely full of unique and quirky characters. Jim Butcher does a great job of introducing them each slowly, though, so I never felt overwhelmed. Or I know when we get books like Game of Thrones, and as fantastic as that is, it needs an appendix for all the characters in there. This book doesn't feel that way. While there are a ton of characters and they all have their own unique quirks and characteristics, I never felt overwhelmed by being introduced to all of them. Additionally, this book feels really fast paced without feeling like it's too rushed. It starts off with Harry doing some initial investigations of the crimes. Then he reaches out to some of his contacts to get more information. He is dodging danger and fending off demons. He is avoiding one aggressive reporter. He's confronting the criminal element in the city, etc., etc. It goes really, really fast, but it feels like a great page turner and it still kept my ADHD attention span focused. I can see why this book has its detractors as well. Some of the things that I really liked about the book may not be what other people prefer. This book has a unique tone. I would say it's whimsical, but when we think of whimsy, we often think of light and fanciful and friendly and nice fairies floating around everywhere. This has a darker tone. It's quirky like, like that whimsical tone book, but it's darker. Anytime Harry is in danger, he is often making sarcastic remarks and things like that. So I think someone's preference for this book may be tied to how much they like Harry. This is a single point of view story and it is given from Harry's perspective the entire book. I loved it, but I can see that if you don't like Harry or you don't like his tone, you may not like it. Also, some people may really struggle with the magic system in this book. Hear me out. If you've ever read Brandon Sanderson's Mistborn trilogy, you know that allomancy is spelled out absolutely perfectly. We get to see all of the benefits of allomancy and all of the deficits of allomancy. We get to see all of the limits, both good and bad, in that magic system. In this magic system, it's very, very different. We are getting piecemeal some information throughout the book. And oftentimes, Harry winds up in a situation and he kind of is like, oh yeah, remember, I can do this thing. And it's never been established before that he can do the thing. However, it's also not been established that he can't do the thing. So for me, this was still really great. It still fit with the tone and quirk of the book. Also, some people may read this expecting it to be a real mystery. I would say it's not truly a mystery. We don't get like a cast of suspects or we don't get clues to figure out throughout the book. 
This is really more like an adventure disguised as a mystery or maybe a mystery disguised as an adventure. I don't know, but it's not a mystery. So if you're expecting that, you may not like this book. So here's the bottom line. I think this book is great, but there are certain things in it that if you don't like them, you will not like it. So here's my little guide for whether you should read or whether you should not read this book. You should read this book if you like quirky characters. You should read this book if you don't mind a single point of view story. And you should read this book if you are not looking for anything too serious. Now, you should not read this book if you are looking for a true mystery. Also, you should not read this book if you are looking for a magic system that is completely fleshed out. And you shouldn't read this book if you take yourself too seriously. So there you have it. If you found this video helpful in any way, shape, or form, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. Additionally, you can follow me over on Goodreads so you can see what I'm reading and what I'll be reviewing soon. We do reviews every week on this channel, so I look forward to seeing you next week with another book review.